In this video, I'm going to show you how to become a detective. No, not the kind of detective that goes around taking pictures of cheating spouses, or not the kind of detective that works for the police department. Instead, I'm going to teach you how to be a detective when it comes to those emails that you get that look legitimate, but maybe aren't, or maybe they don't even look legitimate, but you're not sure. I'm going to teach you how to be a detective with those kind of emails. Hi, I'm John Grubb from 4kcc.com. We publish computing related videos all the time. And if you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because I don't want you to miss any of our videos. All right, again, I'm going to show you how to be a detective with those emails that mm, maybe just don't look right. Let's get started. First, we're going to look at a scare tactic email. This one supposedly comes from American Express. The first thing we notice is that they mention a large amount of money, and this is designed to scare us. Since it is a large amount of money, you're probably going to pay attention. Instead of panicking, we're going to take a look at some key things that happen in fake emails and in different areas that are clues to the authenticity of an email. One of the first places to look is the return email address. For instance, this one says American Express info.amx at virginia.edu. The question is, why would American Express be using a college email? EDU is for education. Local schools, colleges, and universities use that extension. Virginia would be one of them, but why would American Express be using that? There's just no way American Express would be sending an email from an educational institution. This alone would make us totally suspicious of the email, and we could stop right here and say, okay, this is a fake. Still, let's move on. The next thing that's odd in this email is the salutation is dear customer. Don't you suppose that if we had an account with American Express, they would know our name? They have my email address up at the top, but instead of saying, Dear John, it says, Dear Customer. That's red flag number two on this email. Next, we look at the fact that there's an attachment. Even though it says .pdf, and PDFs are normally safe to open, we would not open this one because financial companies almost never send an attachment. They will send an email and ask you to log in to your account because your statement is ready, etc. Once you log into your account, you can then download your statements or whatever else you need as a PDF. But remember, financial institutions, banks, credit card companies, stock exchanges, they almost never send email attachments. There's red flag number three. Finally, if we move our cursor over the link where they want us to click, we see there's a shortened URL address. There's nothing wrong with short URLs. I use them, Amazon uses them, and so does YouTube. However, when you put that in combination with everything else that's wrong in this email, this is just one more clue that this is a fake email. By the way, customers sometimes ask if they should delete an email once they concluded that it's a fake. The answer is no. Instead, mark it spam or junk. This way you won't get any more emails from that email address, which in this case is obviously not American Express. Looking at a second email, this one claims to come from ADP. This is a good time to mention something about suspicious emails in general. One of the things that's easy for us to distinguish whether something is fake or not is if you don't have an account with the company supposedly sending that email. In this example, if you don't have an ADP account, 
then ADP would not be sending you an email and telling you that your account is locked. You automatically know it's a fake and you can market spam or junk. In case you're wondering, ADP is a company that businesses use and it handles payroll. Let's suppose for the moment that you do have an ADP account. Maybe you run a small business and you have one. Let's take a look at other reasons this email might be fake. It says, Dear User, it's not my name. Once again, if I have an account with a company that's handling my payroll, they would know my name. Next, ADP is not an Intuit company. You might know the name Intuit because they own QuickBooks. QuickBooks can handle payroll, but QuickBooks and ADP are not the same company. Even though it says it's from IntuitAlertServices.com, ADP is not part of Intuit, and Intuit would not be sending you an email even if you're an ADP customer. Moving on, if you hold your mouse over the link that they want you to click on, which in this case is Restore Your Account, you'll see that it's a shortened URL, which means we can't actually see where it's going. Just another reason to be suspicious of this email. The third email that we're looking at actually appears to be coming from Intuit QuickBooks. But if we look at the email address up in the corner, what does SOCSWireless.com have to do with QuickBooks? Again, the email address has nothing to do with the company that is supposedly coming from. Also, when you look at this salutation, it says, Dear Valued Customer. Are you seeing a pattern here? If I have a QuickBooks account, it's going to say, Dear John, or Dear Keystone Computer Concepts. In most cases, it's not going to say, Dear Valued Customer. Finally, where it asks us to confirm, it's another short URL. I do want to bring to your attention that other links in the email are probably legitimate, even though they may look strange. Most of these links at the bottom are probably legitimate and will take you to the actual places on the real company's website. This is a common tactic that's used to trick you because if you click on one of those and it takes you to the actual site, you might think that all the links are safe. Our fourth email tells us that we have nine pending emails that can't be delivered. The first thing we're going to notice is that it's from a foreign country. That's odd, but alone doesn't guarantee that the email is fake. Moving on, we look at the download your emails link. It's from a different domain than the one in the from address. Another big red flag. This email is a fake, market spam, and forget it. Our next email is another one of those telling us we owe a large amount of money. This is an attempt to get our attention and panic us. Don't do it. Don't panic. This email has problems. Some of them are different from the other ones we've already looked at. It starts out by telling us our invoice is attached. Problem is, there are no attachments. That's a clue that something's amiss. Once again, dear customer. Next, here is a big no-no. When you put your mouse over the view and pay invoice, the link ends in .php. PHP is a server-side scripting language and it's embedded in HTML. It's used to manage databases and a bunch of other things. It's used safely on many websites, including 4kcc.com. However, it can also be used to steal your information. 
When it comes in an email as a link, be extremely cautious. It's often used to produce a form which asks you for personal or financial information. Often hackers slash scammers want to steal your info and then your money. By the way, there's a link which I'm putting down in the description that will give you a better explanation of PHP if you want to take the time to read more about it. One last note about this email. You might notice that the email has a phone number. Don't bother calling it. If anyone does answer the phone, they'll be in on the scam anyway, so don't bother calling. Now, here's a trick that scammers often use. This is an email sent to me at my own Keystone Computer Concepts address, and it looks like it came from there as well. You should know this hacker did not break into my email and send it through my email. They spoofed my email address, and they tricked the email into showing my address as the return address instead of the real one. While this email has a lot of words and is difficult to read here on this screen, it basically says that a hacker has taken over my computer. They claim they're recording everything I do and say, and they know I went to pornographic sites. First of all, if you're like me and you never go to pornographic sites, you know right away this is a fake. If you do go to pornographic sites, then you have to be a little more cautious, but again, the fact that it came from my address and it was sent to my address, that's a problem. As you can see in the last paragraph, the hacker is trying to really scare me. He or she says, don't ask for anybody's help unless you want your privacy violated. They claim they'll monitor my every move until they get paid. Here's a move you need to make. Just mark this spam or junk and don't worry about their nonsense. Moving on to this next email, it has so many things wrong with it, it's not even funny. It appears to come from Ring Central, which is a company I used to use for my phones. I no longer use Ring Central, but even when I did, their emails did not come from Japan. Additionally, the phone number that's listed isn't my number and never was. Next, it's not my real name. The email address is from a foreign country, and finally, it has an attachment which says it's an audio recording, but it's actually a link to a website. This email is just ridiculous from the get-go, and even if I still had an account with Ring Central, I wouldn't even give this email a second glance. The next email starts with a major issue. It just has an attachment. There's no message, no salutation, no nothing. Just an attachment. Oh, true, it has a bunch of legalese at the bottom, but that's added to make it look genuine. As I say on the screen, it's not legit. This next, while a fake, needs your attention. When you see one like this, you know that your friend or your family member has been hacked. Here's what it says. I hope you are good. Do you have an account with Amazon? Thank you. And then it's signed with their name. In this case, I covered up and blocked out the name so you wouldn't know who this was coming to. Sometimes the email will ask about iTunes gift cards or about whether you have a PayPal account. Whatever you do, do not respond to this type of email. I'm going to repeat that. Do not respond. Do not reply. Why? Because the hacker has created rules that will forward responses to them and not the person whose email got hacked. If you do respond, they will reassure you that it's actually the person you know. Instead, Pick up the phone, call them, text them, or send the Pony Express. Whatever you have to do to alert your friend 
and let them know that their email has been hacked. Here's an email that uses the social engineering principle of having our dreams come true. This looks like we've got something from the Euro Million Lottery. There are three quick clues showing that this is a scam. First, it's sent to undisclosed recipients. That means more than one person, more than just you, have won the big bucks. That's pretty unlikely. Second, it has a PDF attachment. As I mentioned, most legitimate financial companies, which Euro Million Lottery would be one if it exists, don't use attachments, and you should not open this one. Finally, if there really is a Euro Million Lottery, would they be using an Outlook.com email address? Of course not. Again, you know it's a fake. Along the same lines as the last email, this fake one tries to appeal to your dreams. Who wouldn't want to win $5,000? All they want is your information. Market junk or spam and have a nice day. Our last email has lots of clues indicating it's a fake. It's supposedly from Norton Security but yet the email comes from a Gmail account. They show a Norton security charge of $365.64. All you have to do is search online and find out that Norton never costs that much. The name in the salutation is wrong too. By the way, it says best regards and then it gives a phone number. If you search that phone number either in Google or Bing, you'll find that it's a scam. Lots of people have complained about that phone number. In conclusion, the main thing I need you to remember with any of these emails is that the scammers are all trying to use social engineering to get you to click, call, or fill out a form and give up your personal information. They're all aimed in that direction. And it's the three tiers of social engineering that I pointed out in my blog, Social Engineering, The Weakest Link. By the way, you'll find a link to that blog down in the description. If you haven't read it, I urge you to do so. Remember, this is where you become a detective. Don't let your first reactions, whether it's fear, your desire to help someone, or your dreams. Don't react with those emotions. Instead, look at the facts. Look at all of these things I've shown you today, and you'll be able to determine that the greater percentage of emails like I've shown you are fakes and scams. They need to be marked spam or junk and deleted. Become a detective and beat these hackers and scammers at their game. Okay, now you've become a full-fledged 4KCC detective. You're going to look at emails differently now, and you are going to figure out whether they're legit before you click on something you shouldn't do. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day.